You're watching Tag TV. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia News Line. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Thursday, the 18th of August. Heavy rains create flood-like situation in India's Odisha state. More than 467,000 people affected. Bangladesh PM Hasina tells UN that Myanmar must take back Rohingyas. And death toll in Kabul mosque blast climbs past 20. Witnesses recall horror. And now for all the details. Several Indian states are experiencing heavy monsoon rains leading to floods and severe waterlogging that has thrown normal life out of gear. Flood situation in eastern state of Odisha is at its worst since 2011 and more than 467,000 people in 1,757 villages have already been impacted by the massive flood triggered by the rainfall. India's eastern Odisha state is grappling with the worst flood situation since 2011 and over 467,000 people in 10 districts of the state have so far been affected by the massive flood triggered by rainfall. Despite a stoppage of rain for the past three days and a fall in the water flow at the Mahanadi River in Katak City, flood situation remains grave. Several villages were affected in the Khorda district, leaving many villagers stranded in flood water. Authorities and rescue team have been carrying out rescue operations in flood-affected district. Meanwhile, heavy rainfall in Prayagrad city of northern Uttar Pradesh state in the past two days rose the water levels of the river Ganges and Yamuna, submerging low-lying areas and the roads surrounding it. Ganga Yamuna का पानी बढ़ रहा है और इस दुकान को हमारी दुकान में अभी कल पानी नहीं था यहाँ पे काफी दूर था और दुकान के अंदर पानी आ गया Uttar Pradesh is likely to experience isolated heavy falls and thunderstorms or lightning in the coming few days, according to India's weather office. Heavy rainfall in recent days has caused devastating floods in several states. Seasonal monsoon rains from June to September cause deaths and mass displacement across South Asia every year. But they also deliver more than 70% of India's rainfall and are crucial for farmers. A U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price on Wednesday appeared to be defending India's position amid the Ukraine-Russia conflict, saying that it will take a long time for countries who have historic ties with Moscow to reorient their foreign policy. The remarks came over India's crude oil imports from Russia that New Delhi has maintained is guided by its energy security needs. The United States on Wednesday appeared to be defending India's position amid the Ukraine-Russia conflict, with U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price saying that it will take a long time for countries who have historic ties with Moscow to reorient their foreign policy. Price made the remarks while answering to a question on Russian oil imports by India and the U.S. failure to isolate Moscow. India has continued to engage with Russia on a number of issues including on energy security, despite mounting sanctions on Moscow amid the war in Ukraine. We have um, seen uh, countries around the world speak clearly, uh, including with their votes uh, in the UN General Assembly against uh, Russia's aggression in Ukraine. But we also recognize, as I was saying just a moment ago, uh, that th this is not flipping a light switch. Uh, this is something that, uh, especially for countries that have historical relationships uh, with Russia, relationships that as is the case with India, extend back decades, uh, it is going to be a long-term proposition to reorient uh, foreign policy away from Russia. A U.S. media report recently said that Russia has surpassed Saudi Arabia to become the second biggest supplier of crude oil to India. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Tuesday defended the crude oil imports from Russia and termed it the best deal for his country, maintaining that the move is guided by its energy security needs amid high prices globally. 
And moving on, Bangladesh is currently hosting more than 1 million Rohingya refugees who fled Myanmar's Rakhine state in August 2017 after a military crackdown. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina during her meeting with UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Michelle Bachelet on Wednesday reiterated her call to Myanmar to take back home the country's more than 1 million Rohingya nationals from temporary shelter in her country. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Wednesday reiterated her call to Myanmar to take back home the country's more than 1 million Rohingya nationals from temporary shelter in her country. The Rohingyas are the nationals of Myanmar and they have to be taken back, Hasina told UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Michelle Bachelet. PM's press secretary Isanul Karim quoted Hasina as saying, Bachelet, that Myanmar neither refuses that Rohingyas are not their nationals nor is taking them back to their homeland. More than one million Rohingya refugees have been living in often squalid tent cities in the district of Cox's Bazar near the Bangladesh-Myanmar border after fleeing a military crackdown in Rakhine state nearly four years ago. It is the world's largest refugee settlement. Myanmar is facing charges of genocide at the International Court of Justice over the crackdown. Myanmar denies genocide and says its armed forces were conducting legitimate operations against militants who attacked police posts. As part of her four-day visit to Bangladesh, Michelle Bachelet on Tuesday visited Cox's Bazar, where the refugees urged the UN to help them improve safety inside Myanmar so they can return. Bachelet met with a host of officials, civil society representatives and Rohingya refugees, as well as women and youth groups who shared with her their concerns and hopes. She is the first UN human rights chief to make an official trip to the country. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan has assured International Monetary Fund IMF in a letter of intent that it will raise taxes, including the petroleum levy by rupees 50 per litre by 2023. This comes as the global money lender is expected to hold a meeting this month to decide whether to approve a 1.17 billion US dollars tranche for the cash trapped country. The Pakistan government has given an undertaking to the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, committing more taxes, including a raise in petroleum development, levy by rupees 10 per litre in September, followed by increase of rupees 5 per month until it reaches to rupees 50 per litre in 2023, local media reported on Thursday. This comes as Aster Perez Ruiz, the IMF resident representative, said on Wednesday that the global moneylender will meet later on August 29 to take a Pakistan's program review to decide whether to approve a tranche of more than $1.1 billion in critical funding for the cash-strapped country. Finance Minister Mifta Ismail has said that all the IMF conditions have been met to be able to get the tranche, including arrangements for $4 billion in external support to bridge the finance gap. The government has also decided to phase out SR's ration Riyadh program that provides subsidies on daily essentials to low-income families. Earlier on Tuesday, the government jacked up petrol prices by 6.72 per litre amid widespread criticism, with central bank reserves falling as low as $7.8 billion, hardly enough for more than a month of imports. Pakistan has been facing a balance of payment crisis. High commodity prices have hit the country hard. Annual consumer price inflation reached 24.9% in July, the highest in 14 years. And moving on, locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have lamented that the tourism sector in the region is suffering badly due to dilapidated roads, poor connectivity and lack of other facilities. They blame the Pakistan government has left all sections of the society at their own mercy. Locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have raised concern over the declining tourism due to poor road infrastructure and negligent attitude of the Pakistan government towards the illegally occupied region. Ibadullah, an advocate, said the tourism industry has been severely affected amid recent monsoon rains while dilapidated roads, lack of accommodation and transportation and poor network connectivity is keeping even domestic tourists away. He said that the Pakistan government, even after getting huge revenues from the region, has not brought any infrastructure development. 
आज भी आप क्रिकेट में देखें तरह तरह के मसाइल हैं और टूरिस्ट टाइम है पूरा शहर पूरा पाकिस्तान से टूरिस्ट टाइम है जगह जगह रोड ब्लॉकेज है मुसाफिर परेशान है Locals in Gilgit Baltistan have long claimed that politicians make hollow promises to bring about development during elections but no action can be seen on ground. This a Pakistani establishment's indifferent attitude has affected all sections of the society. Well, a news from Afghanistan, death toll climbed to at least 21 on Thursday in the blast that tore through a Kabul mosque on Wednesday. Relatives gathered outside the emergency hospital in the Afghan capital waiting for news of the family members who were being treated for injuries caused by the attack. No group had claimed responsibility for the attack till the last reports came in. People gathered outside a hospital in the Afghan capital, Kabul, on Thursday, waiting for news of their family members injured in the blast that tore through a mosque during evening prayers on Wednesday, killing at least 21 people, according to authorities. Police spokesperson Khalid Zadran said that around 33 people had been injured in the blast and the toll could rise further. Witnesses said the explosion was so powerful that it shattered windows in nearby buildings. There was no immediate claim of responsibility till the last reports came in. The ruling Taliban in a statement condemned the incident but did not publicly assign blame. <laughs> The Taliban say they are restoring security to the war-torn country, which has seen an overall drop in violence since the group took over and defeated a US-backed government a year ago. However, several large attacks, some claimed by Islamic State, have taken place in urban centers in recent months. And a 27-year-old Nepali mother of two, Parvati Sunar, finds herself attending the same school as her son. After returning to an education system, she fled at the age of 15 when she eloped with a man seven years her senior. Sunar, who gave up a job as a housemaid in neighboring India, is determined to finish the 12th grade. Nepali mother of two, Parvati Sunar, puts on her uniform one morning before stepping out of home with her schoolmates, her two sons, Resham and Arjun, in Punarbas, on the southwestern edge of the Himalayan nation. Sunar has decided to re-enroll in an education system she fled at the age of 15 when she lopped with a man to India before giving up a job there as a housemaid to return to Nepal and her studies, aged 27. Just about 57% of women are literate in the country of 29 million and Sunar said she hoped to finish the 12th grade and become literate enough to be able to keep household accounts. I was born in India सासु ससुरा को बार में छोड़े रहा इंडिया जाना फिर ही वहाँ बा सब ये बच्चा देखी लगा रहा बुरो सम सब ये इंग्लिश बोलनी अनित्या को बा भाषा आ रहा है आउट देना बन बनी भी थी कि बनी अतिमला भाषा आउट देना बनी बच्ची बना रहा इस तो इंग्लिश में बोलनी अनि जब आपको सब आलू रहा हमले दीना as a seventh grade student, Sunar was below average but a keen learner, said Bharat Basnit, the principal of the village school. After classes, Sunar and her sons take a 20 minute walk to their home, a tin roofed two room structure of bare bricks shared with their mother in law before engaging in various activities. On some days, Sunar does chores like feeding their goats, cooking and cleaning. On other days, she cycles to computer classes at a nearby institute with her 11-year-old son Resham or spends time completing homework. Occasionally, time is spent catching up with Sunar's husband Yam through video calls who has remained in the southern Indian city of Chennai as a labourer in order to support his family. Sunar's efforts could inspire more village women thirsty to learn beyond their domestic horizons to return to school in Nepal, where they still face discrimination and child marriage is widespread, even though illegal. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.